All right, guys, welcome back to the message. I get this question all the time. What is the easiest way to enter into the stock market? The easiest way to enter the stock market is to buy the S&P 500. In this video, I'm going to walk you through what the S&P 500 looks like, what the product you can expose yourself to the S&P, and what it's going to cost over time. This is super important for investors to understand that this can be that next layer. If you were looking for one product to buy, one that required no education, no experience, the easiest entry to the stock market, the best exposure to the largest companies in the US stock market, what product would you buy? In this video, we're gonna do a little bit deeper dive of what VOO, Vanguard's S&P 500 exchange traded fund has in it and what it could potentially mean for you in way of cost savings over time, guys. So I'm gonna jump you in to the Vanguard's website and we're gonna do a little bit deeper dive. Please enjoy. All right, guys, when we're looking to answer what is the S&P 500 exchange traded fund from Vanguard, thought it better just to bring you right to the uh, Vanguard's website and let them explain what it is. I'm gonna show you the route here that I take and that way you can drop this link into your favorites. This is the Vanguard's homepage. And if we click on investing here, and then we go down to Vanguard ETFs, you're gonna click on that and it's gonna bring you to this page. And then you're gonna to wanna to browse a list of Vanguard ETFs. What you're gonna to wanna to do is take a moment here if you're navigating with me is to save this to your favorites. So you don't have to go through the long route again. Um, but once this will bring you to the uh, Vanguard ETFs homepage. This is really where the nuts and bolts of all their 74 ETFs are listed. Uh, here you're going to notice the notation S for Vanguard Select Funds. So as we scroll through this list, you're going to notice some of these ETFs as we go through the bond ETFs. And we're going to get down into the U.S. stock ETFs here, and we're going to get down almost all the way through that. And you're going to notice the S&P 500 exchange traded fund, denoted VOO. It is one of the select funds from Vanguard, quite frankly, the flagship account as far as I'm concerned from Vanguard. This is going to just give you the snapshot particulars in this listing. It is a large cap blend. ETF. Here's the expense ratio. We'll talk about that a little bit more in depth as we get into this video. The S&P 500 does pay a dividend yield of 1.87. Not too bad. I mean, you've got exposure to 512 companies in this, so not too shabby to have that diversified yield over the S&P 500. Over the years and the decades, that really, really adds up, and that's really where the majority of the wealth actually comes from is the ability to take those dividends and reinvest them back into the fund itself. It's returned 14.47 on an average year over year. The S&P 500 has really been a wonderful wealth generating vehicle for a lot of people over the years. And I think it's uh, definitely worth looking at as a first tier or a first layer for a beginning investor looking to just get that next layer uh, in a self-directed program. Investing in this exchange traded fund requires really very little to no knowledge whatsoever. It really doesn't require any type of education. Uh, this is a, a product that you're able to buy and own really for the rest of your life. It's really not meant to be traded in and out of. It's meant to be bought, funded, and put into a nice retirement account of a self-directed nature that will perform the very best in that account over time. But if you do hover over the ETF and click on it, you're gonna, it's gonna bring you to the details page. And there's a couple things in here that I just wanna bring to everybody's attention. The expense ratio here as shown on the snapshot page is 0 0.03. If you wanna check out the comparable index fund, you're more than uh, uh, able to do that here by clicking on the Admiral Shares, and it's gonna bring you into the comparable index fund, which is VFIAX. It's one of the best index funds that they offer. It does carry with it uh, a little bit higher expense here at 0 .04, and it does carry a $3,000 minimum, which has gone down over time, 
but my su most successful YouTube video that I've released has been a cross comparison between the index funds and the ETF, which I found no difference whatsoever. I just think this is a way the Vanguard offers a different product with a little bit different aesthetics with the exact same holdings in it. So if we click back to the ETF page and we start to scroll down and we're answering the question, what is the VOO? What is the S&P 500 index fund? And it's here, invest in stocks in the S&P 500 index representing 500 of the largest US companies. Okay, great, that can tell a new investor what it is they're getting involved with. It's right here off of the Vanguard's page. It's so much better coming right from the source of information. The goal is to closely track the index's returns, which is considered a gauge of the overall U.S. stock returns. So very, very simple. All right, you come down here and look at these two tools. This will show you a hypothetical growth of $10,000. This always gets new investors curious and raising their eyebrow, uh, asking the question, can I do this too? The answer is yes, you can. But the real takeaway from this is down here at the bottom when we're talking about the actual holdings that make up this exchange traded fund. And this fund is a grouping of 512 companies. Now I just want to premise this. The beauty of this S&P 500 exchange traded fund that gets missed all the time is the fact that you're going to own this for 10, 20, 30, maybe even 40 years. Maybe this fund actually becomes generational wealth and it ends up getting passed to your heirs. Do you think the S&P 500 is going to look the same 10 years from now or 20 years from now or 30 or 40 years from now? The answer is probably no, it's not. And the beauty of this product is that the framework of the product never changes. What I mean by that is this is always going to be indicative of the best quality 500 companies, give or take a few, uh, that represent what the goal of the fund is. So this is always going to be the top companies that make up this index. So very important to understand if you're looking to passively invest in this, know that it is always looking to represent the most current of holdings in the S&P 500. So as the bottom tier companies come and they go and they rotate out, you know, you could lose 20, 30 companies a year out of the S&P 500 and always have exposure to the very, very best of those companies. So even though this is a passive uh, ETF, the beauty of it is that you always have that most recent exposure to the best companies uh, in the US stock market. So the top 10 holdings are here. The top 10 holdings represent 23.5% of the total holdings. If you're a beginning investor and you don't recognize any of these companies, no problem. I think, uh, I think a lot of beginning investors would actually surprise themselves and look at this list and actually recognize a ton of these great companies. If you wanted more information on this exchange traded fund, it's very simple to click into this portfolio holdings, which is at the very bottom here. And once you do so, it's not only going to give you the opportunity to view the top 10 holdings that we just went over, but it'll allow you the opportunity to show down to the exact share amount and the exact dollar amount that the fund actually invests in each one of these wonderful companies and as you start to scroll through this list you're going to find that uh, you may actually recognize a ton of these different companies there's mcdonald's there's walmart just to name a few these jump right out at you union pacific nike these are all the very best if you guys are starbucks fans like i am there's starbucks right there and, and you're investing there's 3m and cbs you're investing in all these wonderful companies by just owning owning one share of this VOO. So really cool. Uh, this is a, a very cool way of getting all the information that you could ever want uh, and then some when you're making your own investment decisions uh, on the VOO. So let's jump into the cost analysis and we'll see how much uh, this exchange traded fund actually costs in comparison to um, a mutual fund holding.
right? So whenever I'm looking to cross compare and get an idea of how much a certain product will cost, any investor should answer ask this question. It's, it's one of those questions that gets breezed over, especially when you're sitting down and trying to establish a relationship with a financial planner. Um, quite frankly, you're not going to be recommended an ETF because it is so cost effective for the individual investor. And that's why you've got guys like me uh, that can actually explain where it is that you can find the information about these wonderful products and then do the cross comparison analysis for yourself. Very simple to do. I'm on the Trading Academy website. The link is at the bottom of every video that I release. Um, this service right here is free of charge. You can come in here and play with these numbers as you see fit. You can use them for your own funds if you're interested in understanding actually how much a fund is costing you. Um, but I drew up a scenario here of $1,000 invested over 40 years, used a $50 funding uh, cycle. Obviously, if this does increase, it does skew the numbers. Actually, it makes my example uh, a lot more uh, telling for the point that I'm trying to make. I do encourage each and every one of you guys to come in here and do this cross comparison for yourself. It's actually very, very telling. Uh, but uh, you guys saw on the Vanguard's website, the S&P's total return is uh, around 14% since 2010. But we're going to use a conservative estimate, a stock market estimate of 8%. We're going to use the cost of owning the ETF, which is here at 0 0.03. We're going to use a mutual fund expense ratio of 0.5 five, which is here, which is on the low end of mutual funds. And then we're going to use a 1.5. That's actually fairly conservative as well. I've seen uh, funds with expense ratios significantly higher than 1%. But for the sake of demonstration, this will prove my point perfectly, okay? So we're going to come in here and we're going to view the report as normal. This is actually the route of the Independent <laughs> Investor Channel here. This is where we live in fee uh, column one. This is the difference between a liberated dollar and an obstructed dollar, okay? What I mean by that is I'm actually comparing this 1% mutual fund that you own and comparing it to the VOO, which is the Vanguard's exchange traded fund here with the expense of 0 0.03, okay? Now, all things considered uh, equal here, 25,000 across the board invested over the 40 years. 182,000 is rendered at the end of that time horizon, whereas 139 is rendered in fee structure three, uh, which is a difference here of just over $43,000. So when you're talking about the fee and how much it's going to cost you over time, this is a question that anybody, even a beginning investor, somebody who knows nothing about investing, can come in here and answer these questions for yourself, guys. Don't take it from me. The math does not lie. The math is consistent no matter who is the user. The math is not to be uh, misconstrued. The math is not to be manipulated in any way. These are how the numbers shake out if you do in fact invest in this product over time as opposed to this product over time. The differences here are absolutely staggering, guys. So with that, I will kick you back to YouTube. Thank you so much. All right, guys, so we've come back out of the cost analysis. Pretty staggering. The mathematics just don't lie. The ironic part about this is why would you ever want to invest in the S&P 500? Why is it that nobody else talks about stuff like this? If you sit down with a financial planner, you're probably not going to have this recommendation come across the desk. Why is that? Okay. Let me be fully upfront. I'm not a financial uh, advisor. Okay. I do not provide financial advice. The disclaimers at the end of this video, but here's the thing. A financial planner is not going to recommend an ETF. Why is that? Because it's such a low cost to entry. It's a passive product. There requires no management. There is no kickback or incentive for buying into an exchange traded fund. It's built to benefit the individual investor. Therefore, you need folks like me who are actually enjoying the opportunity made possible through Vanguard with very little experience and very, very little investing knowledge 
you can actually get involved with these products, set them up to enjoy compounding growth into the future. Putting them in the right account is, is key, but this should help you answer the question of how to get started in the stock market. What's the best fund to buy going into 2020 and beyond? This can really provide you that those answers. Uh, that you seek out in answering that question. How do I get started in the stock market, guys? Thank you so much for tuning into the video, and good luck in your investment future.